In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between molecular structure and acid strength. So in the previous video, we saw this chart, and this chart had all these acids listed out um, from strongest to weakest. Now the question is, is why are strong acids strong, and why are weak acids weak? And in the previous video, we defined that in the context of some in the context of other acids, basically. In this video, we're going to look at what trends are there in the actual structure of the molecules that might make a, a molecule a stronger acid versus a weaker acid. So acid strength is defined as how easily the H plus is removed, or how easily we can take the H plus off. And the main factor is bond strength. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at in all of the different trends we're going to be analyzing, we're going to look at what factors affect bond strength. And because basically what happens is as you increase the bond strength between the acidic proton and whatever it's connected to in the acid, you're going to lower the acid strength. Because as the bond gets stronger and stronger, the harder it is for it to come off, meaning the harder it is for it to act as an acid. So what we're going to be looking for in strong acids is, is going to be things that weaken the bond strength. So the, the weaker the bond, the, uh, the stronger the acid. So let's look at some examples. And our first major example is going to be binary acids. And so this is going to resemble periodic trends quite a bit. Um, we're going to be kind of analyzing these uh, trends. We're going to be analyzing acid and base strength in the context of periodic trends that we learned about. So if you need to go back and review periodic trends, you should take a look at the video that discusses that from the first semester. Okay, so binary acids. So we have going for binary acids, these are things like the following. So examples would be HCl, H2O, H F or like NH3, all of these acids have two elements, the H, which is directly connected to another element, H directly connected to another element, H directly connected to another element, and so on and so forth. And so we're going to analyze these in terms of what happens as we go down a group and what happens as we go across a period. Okay, so let's look at what happens when we go down a group. So in, if you remember back to your atomic trends, as you go down a group, the biggest change that happens going down a group is that as you go down the group, you increase the atomic radius. So uh, for example, with um, HF, HCl, HBr, and HI, as you go from fluorine down to iodide, the uh, the atomic radius of fluorine is very small compared to the atomic radius of iodide, which is very large. And it turns out that as you increase the atomic radius, you, de you uh, decrease the bond strength, and you're going to increase the acid strength. And so the reason for this is HF is relatively small, and so when you compare H and F, their atomic radii are fairly similar, and these can overlap nicely. On the other hand, when you have H versus I, which is very large, the overlap here is not very large. The overlap area is not a very large area compared to HF, which can overlap very easily. So HF is going to form a relatively strong bond compared to HI, which forms a relatively weak bond. So in terms of acid strength, HF is the, is the weakest acid relative to HCl, relative to HBr, relative to HI. And that's because as we go across this group, the Cl gets relatively larger, the Br gets relatively larger, and then the I gets relatively larger, and we get uh, lower and lower acid. We get lower and lower bond strength and higher and higher acid strength. So let's look at the next one, which is going across a period. So here's an example where we have uh, NH3, H2O, and HF. So we're going from N to O to F. 
as, as a, going across the period. So the elements that we're interested are N, O, and F. So we know that going across a period, the biggest factor is the electronegativity. So as the electronegativity increases, Uh, we get an increase in the polarity of the bond and it turns out that an, a more polar bond leads to a decrease in the bond strength and this is going to lead to an increase in the acid strength and I'll show you why in just a second why that's the case so it turns out that HF is a stronger acid than H2O is a stronger acid than NH3 and so if you think about it when we have an increase in, in electronegativity, right? So uh, H is H's electronegativity sits at around 2.1. And then we have, uh, the, in comparison, we have N, O, and F. So when you have the NH bond, if the electronegativity is relatively similar, and so the electron density is fairly uniformly shared across the two. And that means that there's gonna be a lot of electron density shared. So this is really a nonpolar bond. And then as we go across, and I mean the, the, the biggest example would be carbon, which is considered to be truly nonpolar. And H NH is NH is a polar bond, it's just very weakly polar. So I shouldn't write nonpolar there. Because truly uh, the HC bond is what we would consider to be totally uniform. So there's a little bit more electron density, slightly more on the end. Whereas with the carbon, it's much more uniform across the two. Now, as we go to O, O is much more electronegative. So we start to get a concentration of the electronegativity. Let me just draw this a little bit more clearly. We start to get a concentration of the electron density around the O. And then finally, when we get to F, which is the most electronegative, we have very little electron density around the H and most of the electron density around the F. And so what happens is, as the electron density gets pulled more and more toward the anion, the bond, which is a sharing of electrons between the two, gets weaker and weaker and weaker. So that's why HF, it's much easier for the H to pop off because there's less electrons being shared uh, since it's a more polar bond. Whereas with HC, there's more electrons being shared because it's a less polar bond. Okay, so let's look at some oxo acids. And the first one that we're gonna look at is what happens when we have the same structure but a different central atom. So just to refresh our memory, an oxo acid, like um, phosphoric acid, so in phosphoric acid, we have the H's are connected not directly to the phosphorus, but are connected to an oxygen, which is connected to the phosphorus. And uh, so there, there's actually, it's PO4, so, so there are four um, oxygens. I'm just not going to draw all four, but you can see that the H is connected to an O, which is then connected to the phosphorus. So when we talk about the central atom being different, we're talking about this phosphorus that, that we're changing. So let's look at the case of um, acid strength with varying oxo atoms. So let's look at the case of I uh, versus Br versus Cl, where we have something like this. We have H, O, I, O, versus H O B R O and we have H O C L O. And so what happens here is across this series, um, what we're doing is, is we're increasing the electronegativity of the central atom. And when we do that, what's going to happen is as we increase the electronegativity of the central atom, the electron density is going to start to get pulled more and more 
the dipole moment is going to get larger and larger as we do that. So chlorine has the highest electronegativity relative to bromine relative to iodide. So as we're going to pull more and more electrons toward the central atom as we increase the electronegativity, that's going to lead to a weaker and weaker bond strength. So this is going to lead to uh, lower bond strength, lower OH bond strength, and it's going to lead to an increase in the acid strength. So Cl is going to be greater than Br is going to be greater than I. Now you might be asking yourself, but in the with binary acids, we saw that the um, we saw that the atomic radius was the primary factor, and it, it turns out that um, the atomic radius is a little bit less important here because the H is not connected directly to the I. The H is connected to an O. And so the O kind of acts as a buffer. So it turns out that the H really doesn't care all that much about the atomic radius in oxo acids. It cares more about this electronegativity because the, um, because the electronegativity is what's gonna determine how much electron density is on that O. The more electronegative it is, the more electron density gets pulled off of the O, and therefore the weaker the OH bond is gonna be because there's less electrons that can be shared. So that's what happens with uh, the same structure but varying central atom. Now let's look at the case where we have uh, the same central atom but varying oxygens. So uh, in this case we would have something like HClO versus HClO2 versus HClO3 versus HClO4. Now intuitively we kind of know already that HClO4 is a strong acid and all the other ones are weak. So we can assign a trend just based on that where we know that the HClO4 is going to be the strongest. And then the, the question though is why? So if we compare the structure of HClO to HClO4 The difference here is the number of oxygens. So in the case of HClO4, we have all of these oxygens, which are relatively electronegative atoms, pulling electron density toward them. And as these oxygens pull electron density toward them, they pull electrons away from the OH bond. And so that decreases the bond strength. So as you increase the number of oxygens, you decrease the electron density of the OH bond and this decreases the bond strength and increases the acid strength. So with HClO4 the more oxygens you have uh, going from HClO to HClO4 the stronger the acid is going to get. And then the last example we're going to look at is uh, polyprotic acids. And this one is, is relatively straightforward. So with polyprotic acids, uh, you get, a, as you increase the number of uh, protons, you increase the acid strength. So for example, H3PO4 is a stronger acid than H2PO4 minus, which is a stronger acid than HPO4 two minus. And, and basically, it's just because you're, you're you, well, first of all, you have the highest number of protons, so it's more likely that one is going to pop off. But if you think about it, as you, uh, as you increase, as you take away protons, the, you increase the negative charge. And that negative charge is going to hold or add electron density. It's going to pump up the number of electrons that are in the molecule, and it's going to increase the strength of the, the bond between the H and the O. So in this case, uh, as you increase the number of protons, you take you basically are taking away that negative charge and you're making the acid stronger. So let's take a look at some examples where we're going to predict uh, acid strength. Okay, so in this chart we have some acid strength examples, and if we look, we have, uh, for example, so for the first one you can see NH3 versus PH3, and the PH3 is circled, and the trend is that acid strength increases as you go down a group. So um, if you pull out your periodic table, P is below N. And therefore, uh, these are binary acids, so it's going to, uh, the P is going to be 
have a bigger atomic radius and therefore a weaker uh, bond. So let's look at these examples with um, HI and H2TE. So uh, in this case, I and TE are in the same period uh, and you're going right. So in uh, the iodide is to the right of the tellurium. So HI is going to be uh, a stronger acid because this is binary and acid strength increases as you go to the right. Okay, let's look at HSO3 minus and H2SO3. So this one is going to involve polyprotic. And so H2SO3 has more protons. So the acid strength increases as you increase the number of protons. Okay, let's look at H3ASO4 versus H3ASO3. You know that uh, acid strength increases as you increase the number of oxygens. So uh, H3ASO4 is going to be a stronger acid. And so now we have HSO4 minus versus HESO. Uh, HSO4 minus versus HSEO4 minus. And so in this case, the HSO4 minus is going to win because uh, the electronegativity. This is uh, this is poly. This is uh, oxo acid. And uh, the acid strength increases as you increase the electronegativity. So uh, sulfur is higher up on the periodic table than selenium and it's going to have a higher electronegativity.